The second reading comes from Mark 6, uh, verses 30 to 34, and then we're going to skip down to uh, 53 to 56. Uh, <coughs> so we actually skip the, um, the feeding of the 5,000 in Mark. Uh, but I'll refer to that in, in the sermon. So listen to God's word. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in, in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. And skipping down to 53, when they had crossed over, they came to land at Gennesaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about that whole region and began to bring the sick on mats in wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went, <coughs> into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak. And all who touched it were healed. This is God's word to us today. Thanks be to God. So ever since I started wrestling with this scripture, I've been puzzled. I've been puzzled about what gives us compassion. We see compassion in the faces of all of those around us. We see compassion in those who worship, see compassion in those who sing, we see compassion in those who teach and those who preach. We see compassion in healthcare workers who have not taken a break from person to person contact since, you know, during COVID. We see compassion in police officers who go to work every single day, lay down their lives or <coughs> putting their lives on the line, excuse me. <coughs> putting their lives on the line for our top-notch security to keep us safe. <clears throat> we see compassion in even the volunteers in this body of Christ who give, who serve, who go the extra mile, who show passion, who show passion for those in need, even in this community. Now, I've been puzzled about what moves us. I've been puzzled about what gives us that compassion and how we show that compassion. So in our scripture today, we see Jesus the Christ showing massive amounts of compassion. Look, he shows compassion to his disciples after they return from the mission field. He says, come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest for a while. He knows we need a break. He knows we need a vacation, a time to put our feet up and relax a little bit from our work and from our mission. He showed compassion to the great crowd and taught them many things because they were like sheep without a shepherd. He showed compassion by teaching, guiding, coaching, and mentoring them. Now, we didn't read this part in the scripture, but do you remember, I don't know if you remember what Jesus did after he fed the 5,000 men and countless women and children, he showed compassion to his disciples and made them get in a boat and go to Bethsaida, and he said, I'll clean up the mess. Just go on ahead. I'll clean up after you. He was like a mother or a grandmother who did the dishes, took out the trash. He showed compassion. Then Jesus showed compassion to himself by going up on a mountain to pray. Yes, he even modeled compassion by taking care of himself. So finally, when they all got to the land of Gennesaret, the, the massive crowds again were there, running and trying to get to Jesus, and he showed compassion to them by simply letting him touch the fringe of his cloak. And he healed him. Jesus Christ, the compassionate one, always shows compassion, always suffers with us. That's what compassion means, you know. Compassion means to suffer with, suffer with, to sit with, even in, endure pain with one another and just sit with one another, suffer with one another. So I'm puzzled as to how to get this compassion. How do we get it? Am I called to suffer with others? 
Are you called to suffer with others? Sit with others? Endure pain with others? If so, how do we get it? Do we get it by looking at Jesus? Do we get it by remembering that, or being reminded that he not only suffers with us, but suffered for us on the cross? Do we, do we get this compassion by our parents, our Sunday school teachers, our, our grandparents? How do we get compassion? In 1994, hundreds of thousands in Rwanda were murdered in the space of a few weeks by soldiers and, and militia from a rival ethnic group. In response, the United States and much of the world shrugged. <laughs> President Clinton later called his administration's failure to act as one of his great regrets. Puzzled by that apathy, a psychologist named Paul Slovic began conducting experiments to better understand people's reactions to mass suffering and death. What he, what he found was troubling because in one study, his researchers showed people a picture of a seven-year-old girl dying of starvation and asked for donations to help out. He showed another group, two starving children, and then even larger sets of children, and Paul found people's distress didn't grow with the number of children in, in danger or in anguish, but shrank. In fact, he said, the more who die, sometimes the less we care. The more we die, the less we care. In greater numbers, death becomes impersonal. People feel increasingly hopeless that their actions can have any effect. He said this, statistics are human beings with tears dried off. Statistics are human beings with tears dried off. And he said, and that's dangerous because we need tears to motivate us. Interesting, right? We need tears to motivate us. Facts don't do it. Tears and emotions may do it. You see why I'm puzzled? How do we get compassion? Where does it come from? I came across another book from um, a, a story from Phil, um, Philip Yancey's book, <coughs> What's So Amazing About Grace, that makes me squirm. It may make you squirm. Here's the quote. I heard it from a friend who works with the down and out in Chicago. A prostitute came to me in wretched straits, homeless, sick, unable to buy food for her two-year-old daughter. Through sobs and tears, she told me she had been renting out her two-year-old daughter to men interested in kinky sex. She made more renting out her daughter for an hour than she could earn on her own in a night. She had to do it, she said, to support her drug habit. I could hardly bear hearing her sordid story. For one thing, it made me legally liable. I'm required to report cases of child abuse. I had no idea what to say to the woman. At last, I asked her if she had even thought of going to a church for help. I'll never forget the look of pure, naive shock when she cried, Church? Why would I go there? I, al I already feel terrible about myself. They just make me feel worse. What struck me about my friend's story is women like this prostitute fled toward Jesus not away from him. The worse a person felt about herself, the more likely she saw Jesus as a refuge. Has the church lost that gift? Evidently, the down and out who flocked to Jesus when he lived on earth no longer feel welcome among his followers. What's happened? End quote. What does this do inside you? Does this make you squirm like it did for me? This, does it fill you with compassion? or guilt, or something else? How do we get compassion? Maybe this two minute video clip will help. Let's roll the first one. May it be an evening star shines down upon you. May it be Oh, oh, oh. 
fear, confusion, and anguish. Compassion challenges us to cry out with those in misery, to mourn with those who are lonely, to weep with those in tears. Compassion requires us to be weak with the weak, vulnerable with the vulnerable, powerless with the powerless. Compassion means full immersion in the condition of being human. Full immersion in the condition of being human. When we look at compassion this way, it becomes clear that something more is involved than a general kindness or a tenderness. It is not surprising that compassion, understood as suffering with, often evokes in us a deep resistance and even a protest. Perhaps that's why compassion is so hard to get on, to get, or to put on, or to be installed in us. None of us eagerly look forward to suffering and suffering with. So what about personal testimonies? Maybe that'll do it. What about hearing from your own Rick Schmidt, Eileen Ball, and Stephen Whistler at the summer feeding program? Maybe that will give you some compassion. Let's, let's watch that video. So Eileen, how do you get the compassion of Christ? By serving him and doing his work. This lunch program, and when it's over, your community, your neighbor, it doesn't stop just here. And by helping others and being concerned and more compassionate too, you build it through the years. You want to be more Christ-like. Serving Christ is one of the best things I've ever did and the best choice I ever made in my life. So Rick, how would you say that you get the, the, the compassion of Christ. I mean, I, I, I would say that, first of all, I was born a Christian. I went, grew up in Lansdowne Presbyterian Church, and, and I, I'd say that it was instilled in me by God, first of all, at birth. Um, but that aside, to be able to really roll out your compassion, you need to have had examples, people you've seen, and my mother would be a prime example of that for me, and also the church I grew up, which was Lansdowne Presbyterian Church. Um, I just, you know, um, those examples I saw, and then myself just trying to do mission, just made it grow ten hundred fold um, from when I was born in, with it instilled in me. Get the compassion of Christ. I think that. Um, I don't think it, it's about as much about getting compa the compassion of Christ as it is as um, it being instilled in us already uh, from a young age. Since all of us um, are created from by God in the image of God, um, we have the ability to be compassionate, but um, you have to be willing to first accept the blessings God has given or um, has given you in abundance and and kind of. Um, use those to help others in ways that um, are often unimaginable to them because of their cir certain circumstances, but as well as um, for yourself, recognizing every single day that um, you're grateful for the things you have, you have gratitude, and that you can give back because of that. And even even if even if you don't have a lot, just giving a little is enough for God. So, and God knows your heart too. So, you know, anytime you um, you're serving others, you're helping others. It's not for your benefit. It's because it's um, it's because it's the right thing to do. And and Jesus talks about the golden rule of loving your neighbor as you love yourself. And uh, that's super important to keep that in mind as well. something you've been teaching and modeling to your own family. Maybe Jesus touched you with compassion through the Holy Spirit. And like Eileen, it may be one of your greatest gifts. Maybe the image of Christ suffering on the cross gives you compassion, makes you eager to carry your own cross. Only you know. Now there's one, two, one more two-part reason I'm puzzled by this passage. Let me give you both parts and then share my puzzlement. First part, do you see what the crowds are doing at the end of this story? 
They're running and rushing to bring the sick to Jesus. They're showing compassion to their friends and family by bringing the sick ones to Jesus. They're bringing people and putting them in the presence of the Lord, and they get healed. These crowds aren't doing the healing. They're simply bringing their sick family and friends to Jesus. The second part comes from the story in the middle of this passage where in the feeding of the 5,000, when the disciples told Jesus to send the crowds away, Jesus said, you give them something to eat. You give them something to eat. But then Jesus doesn't sit back and wait for that to happen. No, Jesus then took the five loaves, two fish that were available, multiplied them, and fed the people through his disciples. Through his disciples. He used his disciples to distribute the food to feed the people. You give them something to eat. And they did. The food that Jesus provided. So because I'm not real bright, I'm puzzled. Do we get and show compassion by feeding people? Do we get and show compassion by suffering with people? Or do we get and show compassion by bringing people to Jesus? Or do we do a little of both? Maybe you can figure it out. Amen.